Hi, you guys. Welcome to our next First Impression Friday. This one is going to be a big four. We've got McCall's Early Spring, and just judging from this little banner image here, we are in for a real treat. Lots of cutouts, lots of ruching, lots of trends, everything that McCall's has been known for in the last, I don't know, year, couple years. Um, they're really going after, you know, youthful sewists, people with, uh, of any age, with just like fun, trendy um, type of style. So without further ado, let's jump right in. We've got Mrs. Dresses. Uh, Two-piece lined dress is joined at the waist with a decorative ring. <clears throat> view A is sleeveless. View B has puff sleeves. View C has classic sleeves and front slit on skirt. Cutout style dress has flared skirt and comes in two lengths above the knee and lower calf. Thank you for a very detailed description, McCall's. All right, let's take a look at some of this. So you've also got this sort of like high neckline, which makes sense to balance out the cutouts here. And of course, you know, girlfriend has some abs, but that doesn't mean you have to have abs. I think this is a very flattering cut line for all body shapes. Um, I don't know that, you know, necessarily there is going to be like one style, one design for apples and then another one for pears. I think nowadays we are in this place where you wear what you like. That's what I'm doing. Um, no matter, I mean, obviously we're not all going to look like she does in this dress, but I don't think that means you shouldn't wear it if you like it. Um, we do have a lot of fullness in the bust and it comes together into this little ring, which is just a fun, fun, fun detail. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the 80s when we had those little rings and we, you know, attached them to our t-shirts <laughs> at the bottom. But you've got this really cute, cute, cute sleeve. Um, and then I guess this is the flared skirt right at the knee length. <clears throat> Here is the lower calf length skirt with the front slit and the more standard sleeve. So you get even a little bit more coverage this way. Here's the sleeveless version, full skirt there. This must be some version of a circle skirt. But I mean, tell me you wouldn't kill it in Miami in this or on some tropical vacation or I mean, heck, like even to your local fun, like picnic, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you don't have to go anywhere. Um, they did do some things here that, hmm, how do I say, will aid in kind of like cheating a good fit. And one of those is this elastic through here. Um, so you do not have to worry about it fitting super well. You can kind of cheat it a little bit. You know, you get the front to lay nice and flat. You get the back to also lay nice and flat, but with the help of elastic. So you can pull that in really tight and get a close fit to your back. The low back here, <clears throat> or the back of the skirt, is interesting because it does swoop down quite low. And I think that that's just kind of gravity doing its thing. Um, it, uh, I don't not like the back view, but I don't love it as much as the front view. I don't know how they could have the front and anything else in the back. I don't know. You couldn't have the front and then this come up a lot higher or else the front here would also have to come higher. You have this dramatic cut because it scoops so low in the back. So if you're willing to compromise some of the, you know, skin showing in the front, you could have a higher back and that could be a good compromise. I think there's a invisible zipper here and then just a little keyhole here. The elastic, I will say, also aids in getting it on and off. So you didn't have to have a zipper here too, which is hard to just fasten by yourself. So maybe there's some practicality to it. Mm -hmm. And then there are all three views together. And then here are our line drawings. I wish it looked a little bit more like separates in the back, but I just don't think it does. And that's fine. And that's fine. Okay. So there's line art. Oh no, where's their back of the envelope? No, that has to be an accident. So we'll have to look at this one. Tell me that they, this is not going to be it. I can barely read this. 
Okay, gotta zoom in a bunch. All right, so cotton blends, poplin, taffeta, sateen. Um, I think even 100% cottons, I mean, you do want it to be pretty structured because, you know, it can't be too drapey or else this will just fall down. Um, it does need some structure. I think the structure aids in kind of the flare of the skirt and certainly the bubble, like the fullness of the sleeve. Um, but I think you could do 100% cottons here as well. And then this longer version, you could go a little bit lighter weight. You could do like some seersuckers or things like that. That would be such a cute juxtaposition, right? To have like your classic demure seersucker combined with this like wham, bam, pow, fun cutout dress. All right, so the notions are going to be interesting um, to see because these are sort of cut on the bias. I want to know, are we reinforcing this in any way or are we just relying on this um, ring to kind of hold everything together? So one package of single fold bias tape that's for A, B, and C, I'm assuming for the skirt. Uh, one nine inch zipper. We talked about the zipper being in the back. Um, three eighths inch wide elastic and then two hooks and eyes. That's it. So I don't, they aren't calling for any stabilizer in here. They're not calling for twill tape. They're not calling for really anything um, to stabilize this, which I might reevaluate if I were going to make this. But the sleeveless dress only requires two yards of fabric. And then if you add your sleeves, it's an additional yard there. We do have finished bust line measurements of 33 and a half up to 49 inches. Finished measurements. And remember, I told you this is a little bit roomier um, because it does have all the kind of like gathered into the ring. Um, so it is a little bit fuller through here. So that's good. I think this is a great start. Certainly very indicative of spring, which is fun. Next up, we have 8253, Mrs. and Women's Dress. Similar but different. I think this one must be knit. Yes. Uh, three views for ruched cutout knit dresses, including functional drawstring at bust and ruching on skirt. Sleeveless, half sleeve, and long sleeve options are also included. Pattern comes in above knee, midi length options. View A bodice is contrasted for color blocking or print mixing. How stunning does she look? They did so many things here to kind of help, <clears throat> not necessarily trick the eye, but to help the eye see all the beautiful curves of her body. So we've got the beautiful center front ruching, which really just elevates the bust line so much. Um, gives like her, like the middle of her bust, I guess, like some definition and shape. So it's not like a mono bust situation. Then we've got this stunning ruching. Anybody who has a belly, put some ruching over it and it just disappears. <laughs> It just disappears. So I will say that there is not a ton of support here, you know, so I think she probably has a bra on. I think the back is probably full coverage, so you can wear a bra with it. But just keep in mind that if your bra is not super supportive, you could have some issues with under boob here because there is, there's, there's nothing structural here keeping this seam like close to the body. Um, this is just a hemmed, hemmed fabric. You know what I mean? But man, this is really pretty. I don't know exactly how I feel about this rope trim. Would I have preferred it in the self fabric? Would I prefer if it tied up here instead? Mm, I don't know. That might be something I would play around with um, if I were to make this. Just swapping that out and seeing. I don't know. I like it because it kind of you know, covers it up, covers the skin up a little bit. It's more of an illusion, but also I don't love it because it seems kind of sloppy. I don't know. <clears throat> but then you have this beautiful skirt, high-low hem. And then here's the sleeveless version. Same exact everything, just no sleeves. Oh, and then a straight hem that's also shorter. There is the maxi length. That looks really long. And then you also eliminate the sort of ruching at the skirt here, which means it's just straight across. So less skin is going to show here. Um, and then a shorter sleeve than what the model is wearing. Yeah, okay, so it is full coverage in the back. So you're able to wear your bra, but that's it. Like you can't really do a lot of shapewear or anything like that because it would show in the midriff. 
Um, you'd have to wear separates in shapewear. <clears throat> this is a learn to sew, level two. So it's pretty simple. And then they give you lots and lots and lots of extra details and spend a little bit extra time um, before you ever even start sewing, just kind of explaining some of the basics of sewing. So if you're getting into garment sewing, start with a level one and then you can upgrade to a level two from there. That's the, that's kind of the point of their levels. Here are our line drawings. I would have loved to have seen the color blocked version uh, made up, but alas. All right, so knit fabrics, two-way stretch knits, 50% stretch, such as jersey, interlock, and novelty knits. This is not gonna be your rayon jerseys. This is not gonna be your, you know, super thin sweater knits. By the same token, it's also not going to be like your more structured ponties. <clears throat> um, they really are looking for like middle of the road, mid-weight cotton jerseys I think would be best. So two yards of your drawstring and then also for the sleeveless version single fold bias tape and for A and B the elastic for the ruching on the belly. Super 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 easy skill to get this ruching here. Maybe even much easier than it seems, I will dare to say. Okay, so uh, fabric requirements up to two and a, oh, well, actually, yeah, two and a, well, this is the contrast too. So up to three and a half yards of fabric, a bit of a fabric hog. Um, even A, because it is color blocked, it color blocking takes up more fabric than just cutting it all off out of one fabric. Um, but maybe you have like a scrap here that you could use for the bodice and then you'd only need a couple yards for the skirt, something like that. Did they also show the back of A is this? So the back of A is all one fabric. It is all the one of your skirt. <clears throat> okay, so finished garment measurements, they left those off of this pattern. Uh, maybe because it's knits and they didn't want to freak people out. I don't know. Yeah, it looks like they are moving that back of the envelope information only to the images. So interesting. I don't really know why. By that token, why even have this? You know? Weird. Weird, interesting decision. Okay, here is McCall's 8255, Mrs. and Women's Tops. If you liked the tops of the Simplicity Early Spring Collection, this is giving me a very similar type vibe. Uh, this pattern features lined princess seam. Lined princess seam. What does that even mean? Scoop neck tops. I guess supposed to be a comma here. Lined princess seam and scoop neck tops. Woven top has a back separating zipper. A back separating zipper? Yeah, I guess so. But how do you, can you even do that by yourself? Oh, and cropped and hip length options. View B and C have a scalloped hem finish, which you can see here. <clears throat> Puff long sleeve and sleeveless options are also included in this pack. We call them packs now, I guess. All right, so you've got your little scoop neck. There is a bit of an issue here, just where there's a lot of extra fabric in the center front for her. Not to say that that's definitely gonna happen to you, um, but there is a little bit of extra fabric here for her. You've got the puff sleeve that comes down into this little cuff, really pretty. And then here is your scalloped hem, which kind of, you know, extends from the princess seam. Okay. There it is, sleeveless. That must be the cropped version with a short sleeve. And then a longer sleeve option um, without the scallops. And then there she is. What is this? Oh, come on. Guys, you literally sew. You couldn't have hemmed these for her? You are a sewing... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But this is cute with it. I love how the backgrounds match. Okay, here is our back. And... I am unhappy. <laughs> I mean, maybe she's short-waisted. I don't know. There's just a lot of extra fabric here. The zipper certainly doesn't help. It's also one of those zippers that's like, oh shoot, center zip, center zip. Is that what it's called? But this separating situation, 
I mean, I guess. I guess we had to do that. But look how sloppy it is. Like, maybe we should have done a facing or something. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. That just feel, I guess that's how they did. I mean, I'm guessing they're kind of inspired by like um, maybe vintage type woven tops that were this close fitting. And that's how they did it. I can't really think of another way to do it. Unless, could it have zipped on the side maybe? That might have been a little bit better. I don't know. And seriously, can she zip herself into this? I'd like to like do an experiment to see if that's even possible. I don't know that I've ever had a shirt that zipped all the way down the back. It's hard enough to do those separating zippers on a jacket in the front, <laughs> much less in the back. All right, well, there she is. Those are her line drawings. The scallop hem is a cute detail. I just, mm, I don't know if it's for me. All right, so cotton blends, gingham would be adorable, linen, sateen, and then remember it's lined, so you've got to get lining fabrics or some kind of like cotton wall. And then lightweight inter interfacing here for the zipper tape maybe. One separating zipper, one, oh, a different length of separating zipper, and then single fold bias tape for C, the sleeveless version. And then D also gets elastic for the sleeve. It doesn't take very much fabric, you know, one and a half yards at most, depending on your size. Same amount, well, a little bit less for lining because you're not lining the sleeve. Oh, the interfacing could be for the cuffs too. <clears throat> or the facings. Oh, probably facings also. Yeah. Um... And then finished bust measurements are 34 up to 58. Finished. That's not body measurements. It's finished measurements. So it is a pretty close fitting top. So I imagine those that the um, finished measurements and the body measurements are within one or so inches of each other. Um, so if you're close to that 58 mark, you could make this in your size. Okay. Now we have this little cutie. This is just like another version of... I guess the 2022 version of um, uh, pillowcase tops, uh, maybe a little less Susie Homemaker because you have like an actual finished binding here, but let's get into it. This is only misses sizes um, and they come in alphanumeric sizing, extra small to 2X. So learn to sew binding and gathering on this easygoing pullover top with a gathered neckline and binding that have raglan sleeves with options for a puff sleeve and a long sleeve with elastic casing. View A is tank top and view C has flowy flutter sleeve. <clears throat> All right. So you do have the neck binding, you do have the neck gathering, right? Very boho, very easy going, like they said. And it has a raglan sleeve. So there's a seam here. And then this is all one piece for your sleeve. And then you can attach some elastic there. There it is, like, sleeveless. That's the long sleeve version and the flutter sleeve version. I wish she would show us her version untucked. What is this? Did they rip off one label and add another one? I can't read what it says. Um, I just want to see how big and how billowy it actually is, but they are not going to show us that. Um, this is the Learn to Sew Level 1. So we already talked about, we saw Level 2 before, so this is kind of like where you would start. Um, and these are the, some of the things that you would learn from it. So really straightforward, easy little top that I think is still pretty um, cute and attractive. Certainly you see these in ready to wear all the time. And the bonus about tops like these is you can make them out of so many different fabrics. So they've only listed four here, lawn, cotton blends, poplin, and stable knits. But I definitely think the flutter sleeve, I'm any of these versions, you can easily make out of silky fabrics. Um, you can make them out of polyesters. 
silky blends, lightweight drapey up to midweight sort of stable um, wovens as well. You could, 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 could make it out of a knit. It wouldn't really matter. Um, but depending on the drapiness of the knit, you might want to size down and then just forewarning this little bias bound neckline would be just a little bit more challenging in a knit as well as a drapey woven too. <clears throat> but up to one and three quarters of a yard of fabric. And then no finished garment measurements that are very helpful. Yeah, I gotta imagine it's got a ton of ease just kind of throughout, um, which is maybe why they didn't include those here. Very forgiving in the sizes as well. So if choosing the right size is a challenge for you, um, this one could help. Or then again, you go a size too big on this and you're swimming. Um, this thing is falling off. So just get my fast fit worksheet is the best advice I have for you. It's on my website. Um, and it helps you pick your pattern size closer to the right size the first time. Okay, so bone corsets. We talked about corsets in Vogue. This one's coming off very, very Mary Had a Little Lamb. Uh, and I don't know why they had to go so kitschy with it. Like, the corsets that everyone is wearing and the cool girls are making them look cool aren't this. Nor were they really the Vogue one, if I'm being honest. But maybe they, that's why they went this like milkmaid direction because Vogue's was sort of like more classic. I don't know. Bone corsets with ribbon and lace trim have spandex side panels. Spandex side panels for ease of movement and comfort. Back opening has faux lacing that conceals separating zipper. Separate pattern pieces for eight for cup sizes. And then we have two size ranges, 6 to 14, and then 14 to 22. Now, I'd like to also point out that this is just a Mrs. size, but this is the same model that they used for their women's pattern a few patterns back. So it's a little bit misleading um, having the sizes go up to a size 22 and not calling it a women's pattern. I know that they use different blocks for women's and Mrs., but if you are a plus size sewist, would you know to look at misses? You'd have to answer that for me. I'm not sure. I'm kind of like an in-betweeny. Well, that's not true. These, these days I am fully sitting in the middle of this little section here. So I've never had to consider women's patterns before. But I mean, if you're a size 22, you can shop both, right? Hmm, I don't know. Just thinking out loud. Okay. So we have this corset. Princess seams with this extra little thing. I don't even know what that is. Uh, this boning through here, boning through here. You can definitely see that. It definitely has a curve to it. And then this is where the little side panels are. Then it is adorned with freaking shiny ribbon bows ribbon this thing that isn't even sewn down and then ribbon cascading through this and if that wasn't enough they've also added lace <clears throat> here is oh god not oh man um another version <laughs> i'm having a hard time like processing what i'm seeing um she they kept the bows here kept the lace trim here is is a little bit uh narrower and then Instead of the zigzaggy situation, they did do some more bows here. And then this is more of a more of a cup shape versus a pointier shape. I don't know that I like either one of them, to be honest. Um, and then you can see her little side panel here as well. Here's a third version. I mean... I think this is too big on her, even with the panels. I just, I don't, I don't know about this. This is giving me major, I mean, I'll, if I'm able to kind of come to terms with this, I don't know I can come to terms with this. Maybe that's more of like a traditional, like Renaissance style. And I just am not familiar because I don't 
so costumes, but I mean, maybe this is like a version of a corset that is calling back to a specific time period and not necessarily as modern as what I have seen. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't, I don't know that I would see somebody walking around in this outfit and think, yes, she looks like somebody who knows what she's doing in when she gets herself dressed. I would think, I would think what costume party is she going to later? That's what I would think. And I am someone who was like team corset, you know, I am, I am supportive of the corset idea. This, this is not it. Even if you were to take all that stuff away, can you make this straight across? Cause the, in that case, I mean, can you just chop that off? I don't, I don't get the point of that. Plus, can you sit down with boning going like that? <clears throat> this is the, oh, this is the faux lace that they were describing, which I got to admit is not a terrible idea. So typically, I think you would have a zipper going up the back, right? And then you would do this lace over top. Obviously, that's impossible to do by yourself. So they almost just like threaded the lace through like you would a shoestring, wrapping it around the kind of lap of the zipper that's going to cover the zipper teeth itself. So when you zip it up, it looks like you've also laced up a corset. You've laced it up, but you haven't. You've just zipped it closed. Also, this is another example of a separating zipper that you have to do by yourself. So in addition to these model photos, I would also like to see the model zipping up the top by herself. Then I would be convinced <laughs> that that would actually work. That's funny. But you can tell, even though they did this, the spandex inset here, it's still too big on her. Um, you know, in a lot of ways, there isn't enough curvature through here for her. Or, or am I getting that backwards? Or there's too much curvature and that's why it's coming away from her body. Maybe that's it. I mean, I think if we're all going to be honest here, it looks best on her, right? She looks the most snatched out of everybody. Um, which is not to say anything about anybody's bodies. It's just about, I think, the corset design is meant for a curvier figure. That's all. <clears throat> so here they are. It looks even crazier in a line drawing. But I think this is like a separate panel. So I don't know that you could just lop that off. I don't know. Like I, I think what I'm coming to terms with is this still is not the corset for me. I do want one. I do want to make one. But the Vogue one wasn't it. And this one's not it. So we'll have to wait and see what comes down the line. But corsets are having a major, major moment. So... Hopefully there will be more and they will be a lot more wearable in like everyday regular life. Okay, so your fabrics. Satin, cotton sateen, and silk. They've gone very traditional with the fabric recommendations here. Um, and then the contrast for the side panels are four-way stretch knits like spandex. And then it's also lined in spandex those side panels um, and then lightweight sew in interfacing and then you need a ton of notions um, notably separating zipper boning um, and a lot of ribbon lace trim all kinds of different stuff clearly does not take a lot of fabric and then your finished garment measurements bust and waist you have both of those here so 30 and a half to 44 inches finished bust measurement, which as we saw was very close fitting. And then your waist measurement is 22 to 35 and a half. But there is also some wiggle room here because you do have that spandex side panel. So this is probably it at its smallest. And then you can stretch it out depending on how much stretch your spandex has. 
to add, I don't know, a couple more inches to your waist and your bust too, because I think it goes all the way up to the underarm. So interesting. I'm glad that they've included it. Again, this is not for me, um, but I'm glad that they are at least aware of the idea that corsets are having a moment. Okay, so this is just the skirt that we're looking at here. Are we not seeing the Vogue skirt? Remember the Vogue skirt that had the blue? It had like two different fabrics. It definitely ties up just like this, has the same swoopy thing. Maybe not so much of a little flounce here, but it's got, it's a, it's a circle skirt that ties on the side. So this must be like the cheaper version of that. Um, cause they look a lot alike, like a lot alike. Um, okay. So learn to sew. It's another learn to sew pattern. A true wrap skirt with waistband and self-tie, views A and B, ballet skirts are above the knee, view B has a flounce, which we can see here, view C has a curved shaped hem and hits below the knee, which might be what she's wearing, view D is lower than calf length. All right, so we can zoom in and see the flounce a little bit better here. So the Vogue one, it's all one piece. You don't have a separate flounce. Okay, so this must be the longer version, straight, not curved, right? That one has a little bit of a curve to it. Okay, these do look a lot different once you get into the other views and the line drawings from that Vogue one. This one just happens to look a lot like that Vogue one. I quite like this one too. I like the little flounce detail. I don't know why this is coming up in the middle right? Or is it just how it's falling? <clears throat> and it's learned to sew level one. So super simple, super straightforward. I mean, so is the Vogue one to be perfectly honest. Um, I bought the Vogue one. It does take a lot of fabric. This one, because it has the flounce would take, well, it depends on how you look at it. Could take more, could take less. I'd have to get into it because the flounce, depending on if it's cut like a big donut, could take up a lot, but if it's cut just like a subtle curve, maybe not so much. I'd have to see how the pattern pieces lay out. Um, the ballet skirt is really sweet. This one with the flounce is really nice. I'm not so sure I'd make either one of these though. I mean, depending on fabrics, right? Because again, this is one of those that you could make out of a ton of different fabrics. I mean, maybe these two are more suited for more drapey fabrics, obviously. But you could make these out of weightier ones. This could even be, you know, like a lightweight wool of some kind. So yeah, I guess if you kind of think outside the box in terms of fabrics, you could definitely utilize all four of these and get four totally different looks. <clears throat> So before spring, they're recommending crepes, lawn, cotton blends, and lightweight sateens. So I definitely think that this is another one of those cases where some of these fabrics work for different views and others don't. So like the lightweight sateen, for example, is more of a structured fabric that would work well for C or D, but I wouldn't recommend it for B. I wouldn't recommend it for this flouncy thing. You could make it out of this. It would just, instead of falling close to the body like it did on her, which we can see here. See how it's kind of just like falling in on her? It would stand away from the body a little bit more. And all of this would create like a little bit more like that emoji with the red dancing girl. <laughs> a little more like that. Okay. And then we also need an itty bitty amount of lightweight fusible. I think it's just for the waistband and the ties maybe. But it's alphanumeric sizing. Again, they're making the sizing very easy. This is not one of the things that you even you really only need your waist measurement for this because you can just, well, I mean, I don't know. Maybe you only need your hip measurement and then you can just tighten the ties to adjust to your waist. Um, but nonetheless, one and three quarters of a yard of fabric for the short one, the flounce does take a little bit more, one and a quarter yards more. And then depending on the length, you have these um, one and a half, two and a half yards for that. So yeah, finished garment measurements, they're only giving us the hip because they think that the waist is, you know, adjustable, which it is. Um, so finished hip is 36 and a half to 54 and a half. 
Yep. And there is a, you know, there's a big jump here, four inches between the two. Um, but you could easily grade between these and make a large plus <laughs> um, and fall somewhere in here. The, the, the side seams, you're going to be able to see a big, there's probably like an inch gap between each one. Maybe, maybe a little bit less than that, but you should be able to finagle it a little bit. Or if you're using a lighter weight fabric, air for the larger size and a more structured fabric, um, try and get closer to your actual size. You know, alphanumeric sizing is nice, but it is more of a kind of estimate. So, all right, now we've got some pants, shorts. Yeah, oh, and a skirt, okay. So Melissa Watson from Palmer Plush, if you're not familiar, Palmer Plush has a kind of tissue fitting method. So when you get your pattern, you look at the tissue paper, you're going to see like all these lines and you can add like for pants, for example, they'll have full tummy adjustment, full bust, I mean, sorry, full seat adjustment. Um, of course, lots of length and shortened lines. The idea is that if you follow their method, you will get a better fitting garment right out of the gate. But you have to fully understand what those adjustments do, how much of those adjustments you need. And that's sort of the part where I feel like we aren't getting educated on that from them, which is why I've never fully, you know, been a big cheerleader for Palmer Plush. I've gotten their patterns before. I've tried to do them. But I, and I see all the lines, I see where I'm supposed to cut and I get the concept of it, but then it's just like, well, now what, you know, like how much do I do? Do I even need this alteration? I'm not sure. So <clears throat> that's a little bit of the, I will say though, there is a pair of culottes that I made from them where I did the full seat adjustment. I was kind of just guessing and it is one of the better fitting crotch garments that I have. So maybe I should be a better cheerleader for them than I am. Maybe I just chalked that up to luck when really it wasn't. It was drafting and I should. So maybe this, maybe I will grab this and give it a go and see what I think. Okay, all that to say, skirt, shorts, and culotte have softly pleated front and back darts. All views have shaped waistbands with button openings on side and inset pockets. <clears throat> you can also see this is hitting just below her waist so a shaped pocket I mean I'm sorry a shaped waistband makes perfect sense it also has kind of like a yoke shape to it um, and then clearly a very strong center front pleat um, and then these are also pretty deep pleats as well I love the idea of how this turns into the pocket I think I hope they show us that um, and the style of it just looks great with this little high neck halter rib knit and then all this like um, kind of vintage vacation vibes I'm getting. So there's the short. And I'm assuming she's wearing the culotte, right? Is that what we think? But it could very well be the skirt. I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. I think this, the stopping point of this seam here could be reevaluated. This feels a little bit low. Maybe it's just on her. Um, but even in the front view for her, I felt like it was a little long, right? Does and I think that's where this whole fold. Well, that could be from her knee, because she's got her knee popped out. So maybe not so much that. Maybe this one. It just feels like it's pointing right to this little point here. I feel like if this stopped up here, maybe this would get some of the relief that it needs. And then same thing in the back. You do have these, and I feel like these are pointing right at this thing. I also love this fabric that she chose. I wanna say it's probably a linen blend. So they also still aren't telling us which is the skirt and which is the short and culotte, but I'm guessing skirt, short, culotte, I'm guessing. All right, so wool blends, maybe that's what she had, some kind of wool and linen blend maybe. Gabardine, crepe. I mean, I could see it in 100% linen even. I could see it in some kind of like lightweight suitings. Um, I'm trying to think, like twill? 
I don't know. I think it needs a little bit of drape. So maybe like a rayon twill would be nice. Something along those lines. Lining fabric and lightweight fusible. Two buttons and one hook and eye. Uh, the skirt is A, so just like I thought. Um, and then only the waistband is interfaced. Then the shorts, B, the shorter of the two, couple yards of fabric. And then the pants, the culottes need three and a half yards, but I think that model was very tall. I wish they, I wish they would tell us information like that, but she seems like a tall person to me. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And this is hitting closer to her ankle than it is her knee. So I would bet that most of us average size people or even petite uh, could lop off a lot of length here and get this down to maybe a three yard, maybe even a little bit less than that. And then finished garment measurements, just the widths. Okay. All right. I mean, like I said, I should probably give this another go and see if, cause I mean, I also sewed that other garment a couple years ago, maybe three or four years ago. So Maybe I've come a long way in terms of fitting on my own and also would appreciate their method a little bit more, it, specifically regarding pants. <clears throat> okay, unisex shirts and hats. <laughs> unisex camp shirt has tucks with and without patch pockets and short or long sleeves. View C has decorative trim. It includes bucket hat in four sizes. I'm guessing that's the fitted band part. Choose a fun print for beach day. Yeah, I mean, I think it looks exceptional on him. On her, I feel like maybe it's with the khakis. Maybe that's what's throwing me off. She feels like a, a like vintage bowling alley team member. He looks great. I don't know about the hat, but his shirt looks wonderful. Right? I mean, maybe this one was illustrated to give us a masculine vibe, but it's feeling masculine to me. I mean, that one especially. There's your bucket hat. Hmm. I don't not like it. I just think it looks a little bit like, you know, dowdy on her. Where on him, it looks really cool and modern and hip. I guess because guys fashion, like being vintage is modern. <laughs> and in women's fashion, being vintage is just vintage. It's just, you know. So, hmm. And I'm having a really hard time envisioning this. This feels like a tuxedo shirt, but these definitely are not. So I guess it's just illustrating that you can make it in a long sleeve. And is this like some kind of special trim or something? And then have more of a fancier vibe to it? <laughs> All right. Poplin, cotton blends, linen, and lightweight denim like chambray. All of that makes perfect sense to me. They probably should have added shirtings. I don't know why. That seems like the most obvious. But then D has, oh the, oh, the hat has a lining. So lining fabrics like a lawn, or you could just double up on whatever fabric you used. Um, eight buttons, 12 buttons. And then there is trim in view C. This is some kind of um, one half to five eighths inch wide trim. So maybe if you made this version put a little bit of like eyelet trim in there I don't know I'm trying to like modern it up a little bit <clears throat> alphanumeric sizing from small to 3xl couple yards of fabric shirt C does take a little bit more because of the sleeves and then here's your hat requirements and then I mean the lower edge of the width could be considered the hip measurement um, but I think you're probably going to be basing this off of your chest size. So I wish they would have given bust measurements, but 43 and a quarter up to 63 and a quarter. Yeah, I don't hate it. I love it for a guy. For me, I don't know. 
I think there's a lot of a lot cuter ways to use these kind of like lightweight cottons than than this for me. Okay, now we have okay, so you guys have talked me into at least looking at the line drawings of the vintage patterns. So here we are. Um this is a 1976 reissued sewing pattern. And I'm getting all the vibes of this late mid to late 70s for sure. Um, both in how she is tan <laughs> and the midriff showing and the elastic and the flowers and yes, all the 70s feelings. Yeah, I mean, that's Vera Fawcett, right? Or her, one of these two girls. Maybe these are Charlie's Angels altogether. It is feeling a little bit costumey, I will say. If I were to make this today and wear it out to Target, would people think... She's going to a roller rink 70s party later, and that's why she's wearing this outfit. Um, we do have a basic sort of elasticated pants, super wide leg, super high waist. This, I think, is a skirt. Here's your little top, you know, that ties up to give your midriff. And then look at these. I don't even, I can't even make heads or tails of what is happening here. Your sleeves are just, I guess these are like all rectangles. If you've been quilting, it looks like you could probably use some of your quilting skills to make these little things. Um, and then here's your the back of the envelope. Yeah, I don't fully understand what that means. Those, let me see the girls again. Oh, are they just like... I think it's three rectangles and they just get top stitched onto each other. I don't know. I don't understand the construction, but they look great. I can get behind some 70s fashion, but I'd want it to make, I'd want to make sure that it looked like not a costume. So this is a dress and top 1975 reissued sewing pattern. This is not meant to be a nightgown. Is that what they're telling me? So you have like this little square neckline, which is cute. Flutter sleeve, very modern. This little like, is this a belt or is it a sewn in waistband? Hard to tell, but you've also got lovely princess seams. I mean, this looks very modern. Is that, I think that's a separate belt. I can't tell if it's sewn in. And why does she have such bad posture? Girlfriend, stand up straight. Okay, so it is a sewn in belt. So it's sewn in like a waistband to the side seams and then it's loose from there to where you can tie it. So in a lot of ways, this is adjustable. Um, which is nice for those of us that have fluctuating, fluctuating waistlines, <laughs> like myself. This one's cute. I like this one. I think you could make it out of all kinds of fabrics and, you know, not look like... I mean, of course, you know, baby pink with, you know, whatever this is supposed to be looks like a nightgown. Um, but I think you could make it out of something similar to this. And have it be a cute little sundress for sure. Or even like this with some kind of like embroidered cotton or something. It would be like a nod to the 70s, but not like, but still like a modern version of it, I guess. I guess these don't feel, you know, sometimes the vintage patterns when they harken back to like the teens and 20s and 30s that's when I get real lost because I just don't have a good understanding of those patterns. This feels like that wasn't that long ago. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't born yet, but, um, but it still feels sort of recent. <laughs> okay. So now we have this sleep set and you guys know I am a sucker for a pajama romper. If I'm not the one who has coined and trademarked and registered that name. I should be because I've been talking about pajama rompers for a long time. 
Um, this one is no different. Yes, we're going to talk about it in the realm of sleepwear, but I would wear this out. Okay. So with that said, romper and wide leg jumpsuit have deep V necklines with front pleats at shoulder straps. And I, I'm assuming we'll see that. Yes. Um, robes have sash and flowy or blue sun raglan long sleeves. Robe length options are above the knee and lower calf length, which is her pink version here. <clears throat> All loungewear styles have side seam pockets, perfect wedding and bridal party ensemble. Interesting that they're giving us like little suggestions of how we can wear them for special events. Like remember the other one said something about beach day and this is now telling me I need to make this for my bridal party. So V-neck center front seam romper, side seam pockets. The robe is pretty straightforward. It does have the raglan sleeve like they explained. Maybe like a, yeah, there's like a front, um, it's not a placket, but like a, oh, what's it called? Like a little panel here. And this is a very wide drapey open sleeve on the robe. Here's the romper um without the robe on so you can see the the straps are sewn in separately like they're attached right here this is that pleat detail that they're talking about it's very hard to see right here but there is a little pleat going up into here which just gives you like it more room for your bust really um this though looks really low like i think that's the bottom of the arm side which I understand the drapey, loosey, flowy pajama situation, but it should also still fit, right? I mean, you turn over the wrong way and your whole boob is hanging out. Don't you think? Maybe not your whole boob, depending on how big your boobs are, but you know what I'm saying? Like this just feels, even in the drawing, really low. Uh, we do have a shorts version. Here is the robe. You can put some elastic at the cuff to give it that blue sun sort of vibe like they were explaining. And then there she is with it tied up a little bit. Yeah, you can see a little bit better how the sleeves are here. Not a ton better though. I also would like to see a better understanding of these side seam pockets. I guess they're just literally in the side seam of both options, which means they're floppy teardrop pockets. So I would pass. Plus, who needs pockets when you go to bed? Maybe in the robe, maybe in the robe. But I think I would rather put on some patch pockets, maybe. I don't know. But it's cute. She's really, really cute. They had another um, last season. Last season? Remember the pink loungewear set with a romper? I got that one. So maybe I should start collecting them. But if I were to fix this sleeve issue... I would make this out of a very similar fabric as this, and you better believe I would be sleeping, waking up, going to run errands at Target, and coming back home all in my pajamas. Um, yes, I would not hesitate to do that for one second. <clears throat> yeah, okay, so here we can see the, the seams a little bit better. It is just a side seam pocket, so floppy teardrop pockets. Um, you might could redraft them to go to the center front seam, since there is this seam here just to anchor it in place, at least at the top. Um, but the robe, you could not because the robe has no seams to it whatsoever. I mean, but this looks like any other romper. It doesn't necessarily give me pajama vibes. They just threw in this robe with it. And so now it's like, oh, now it's pajamas. But I think it could be either. <clears throat> okay. Charmeuse, crepe, chalet, jersey knit even. Um, very comfy. Elastic for that one sleeve. And that's really it. There's not any notions. There's no interfacing, no buttons, no zippers, none of that. Two yards of fabric for the shorts, three and one eighths for the jumpsuit. You could probably again fudge that just to get um, it right at the three yard mark by making the pants shorter. Not to mention, I'm finding that more often than not, I'm having to shorten the bodices of mine. So I could probably even eke that out of two and a half, depending on how much of this I have to shorten. Um, and then your robe, yeah, the robe's gonna take a lot. I mean, it's just a lot of fabric, you know, big sleeves, 
loose fitting, bodice, all of that. Finish links are all they're going to give us. But it is pretty loose fitting everywhere, so I can kind of see. I think this is going to do well for them. I like this one. Okay, now we have a little menswear pajama set. Drafted for men, I believe. When it's unisex, it uses a different block than menswear, right? And unisex is also a different block than women's wear. Does anybody know the answers to those things? Um, but it's a men's loungewear short, uh, set. This is similar to vintage and undergarment type stuff where I just don't fully understand it. So we're just going to quickly like take a look. But it is your classic pajamas, right? Like they added some piping. I mean, it's Carolyn pajamas, big four style. Um, yeah. I mean, not to say a woman couldn't wear this. I just would wonder if it's, because I think a woman's would be straight down, right? And a men's would cut in. Is that correct? The side seam would go straight down or out for a woman. And for a man, it either goes straight down or in. Is that right? I might be making that up. Here is another menswear pattern. It's shorts. I'm so happy to see the guys getting like their own love. I think in the past, um, Simplicity's had that taken care of with Mimi G and Norris. They've pretty much got the menswear covered. But if we've seen any menswear, it's been in the unisex category. So it's nice to see that they are getting their own here. It doesn't look like Oh, no, he is wearing them. Okay, so they've, it's more of a cargo pant <laughs> with the cuff and buttons. I mean, I don't know. The shorts are probably pretty cute. Yeah. You can tell that they don't do a lot of menswear because this stuff's pretty basic. I mean, you take off all this la-di-da and you've just got a basic men's trouser, a uh, men's jean even. Um, this is growing on me, though. If you want to be a cool guy, I can see you doing that, you know, an it guy. All right. So now we're getting into accessories. So we've got a little purse here. All purses have an inside pocket. All right. Just a little, oh, stop. That purse is this pattern. Remember when I said, I thought that that was really cute. Well, no wonder you can make it yourself. Here are all the designs. This little design of purse, who is it that is doing, is it Chanel? Somebody has this purse and I'm seeing it all over TikTok and it's like black satin. So, um, yes, they are saying cotton, cotton blends, twill, synthetic leather, synthetic suede, yeah, even like a crepe back satin, and then you line it with cotton blends, lining fabric, interfacing, heavyweight, uh, craft weight sew-in. Yeah, 100%. Um, zipper, magnetic snap, and also maybe a chain if you want to add like a shoulder strap to it. Who gets a chain? See? Oh, this is a chain. Length of your choice. And then E is a zipper. So... A, C, and D get a zipper. <clears throat> How fun. I mean, isn't that so cute? I want one. I'm getting that. <laughs> I'm going to make that. I wonder if I have fabric in my stash. Um, now we have a tote and pouch. Um, rope strap totes have inside pockets man look at that grommet that's huge how do you even install that have you ever seen a grommet so big oh i kind of love the cheetah and the stripe that's really cute big giant ropes oh that's it just the two so either an outside pocket or not and then collar blocked or not <clears throat> but yeah the little um the little, uh, where did it go? Tassel thingies are really cute, or feathers or whatever it is they're using. Um, this has caught my eye. Headliner utility fabric for your interfacing. Headliner is what is on the roof of your car. Not the roof, but like the inside top of your car. Um, fusible fleece. 
and then you can make your little pouch out of chenille or cotton and cotton blends. I imagine like all kinds of leathers and stuff too because it looks like it's sewn wrong sides together. So that could be a big fun project. How big are those grommets? One and nine sixteenths of an inch grommets. So one, almost one and a half, a little more than one and a half. And then a grommet tool. Yeah, you think? I wonder where you get a grommet and a grommet tool that big. Couldn't you also, hmm, instead of buying the grommets, couldn't you also do like hand embroidery, like all the way around it? Would that be stable enough? I'm trying to think of a way to make it doable without having to spend a lot of money on all these tools and stuff. Yeah. Hmm. Fun. Okay. This is little girl's clothes. I mean, freaking adorable. Always. Look at this baby. <laughs> and then you have your little stuffies, which are equally fun. Okay. McCall Spring. I mean, I feel like it was one of those, even for me, like super polarizing collections where the patterns I either loved or didn't really love at all. There were none that were sort of just like meh in between. It was yes, I want this or no, I don't want this. Um, I'm appreciating, you know, again, their attention to the trends. I feel like they're, they're on it with that. Um, and the learn to sew patterns, I think were really great additions this time too. Sometimes those can feel very like basic and in in the terms of sewing they are basic but in terms of design they don't necessarily have to be <clears throat> the melissa did a good job with palmer plush pattern this time sometimes on in my opinion those can be a little bit of a throwaway as well but yeah the standout for me is probably the um pajama set or the like pajama romper um and the bag for sure and then i'll probably grab melissa's pattern and the knit dress the, with the cutouts, um, just because I want to give Melissa's pattern a try again. And the knit dress is not like anything that I have in my wardrobe. Where was it? This one here. Um, I feel like I could make that wear it a million places this summer. I'd even wear that to Target. Um, so <laughs> maybe with a flat and a jean jacket or something. But, um, but yeah, I think it was a really cute collection. Let me know what you guys thought in the comment section below, let me know what you're going to be adding to your shopping list. There is no sale at Joanne um, that I know of and through at least March 2nd. I just put the post up on Instagram today. So um, maybe with this new collection coming out, they'll do a sale in early March, which we could all hope for. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for me today. I have linked uh, here in the end slate to last week's First Impression Friday video which was for Indie Pattern Company Petite Stitchery. Um, and if you like these videos, please subscribe, click the bell, and give this video a like. But thanks so much for watching, and I will see you all very soon. Bye!